when you don't have a word or, or you need a word, um, you can always make it up or create it. That's what I thought when I, I first tried to do films with text or text films. And uh, it was easy enough to associate poem with cinema and cine. And I thought I was very smart coining the term cine poem. Uh, that was about 10 or 12 years ago when I, I, I first tried this form. And um, then they were published into a DVD, and I chose that as a title because I thought it was a clear enough uh, legend or, or concept. It really meant for me a very particular form, a uh, very precisely defined form, um, created uh, in response to a, a, a very precise aesthetic and technical question that I was uh, toying with at the time. And the question was, is there and can there be a way of inscribing the words on a screen and directing the reading of the words and their rhythm that would be particular to the cinema medium. Uh, that is, uh, is there or can there be a truly cinematic way of writing? I looked for examples of that in existing films and the way they used written language and in some experimental films as well, but not many of them actually displayed uh, purely uh, verbal uh, written animations and movements. Um, of course, I had, at the time, I didn't know that the term existed already, that I thought I invented. I had never come across it or noticed it. And um, I was not even sure that there existed such films that would you know, strictly correspond to the definition of a a truly cinematic writing. What I could find that uh, approached that or looked a little like that, um, well, actually only one film was precisely uh, what I was looking for or doing what I was looking for, and that's a film I discovered in the Fluxus anthology of films of the early 60s, I believe, and it's a film by Paul Sharitz, an experimental filmmaker, uh, called Word Movie. And the film consists in a very fast succession of words that share one common letter in the center. And it's also a very complicated um, apparatus around the, this, this word animation because you have two voices, uh, uh, off voices, uh, left and right, a woman's voice and an, a, ma a male voice, um, uh, telling a list of terms and one is a medical list of terms referring to reflexes and muscle reaction. And the other one, I forgot, it's from another realm. So it's kind of polyphonic text with the written word in front and, of course, more present than the others because it's flickering so fast. You know that Paul Charis, you may know, of, is, is one of the three, three inventors of the flicker film, that is films that alternate frames and colors so fast that it has this subliminal uh, flickering effect on your on your brains. So the words themselves flickered, and um, they were really uh, the center and almost the entirety of the film, of the content of the film. It's a very brilliant film. I, I really strongly recommend it to you if you didn't, uh, if you never saw it. It's quite short. It's very, very powerful and strong. But the only other examples I knew of this kind of work were not as centralized, on, on centered or focused on, on the word itself. There were some of Marcel Duchamp's films, mm -hmm. you know, the, the cin uh, anemic cinema, and his rotating apparatus with words that create uh, elaborate pun, um, uh, what we call in French contrepétrie, that is, reversal of order of some syllable that create another meaning and sometimes usually an obscene meaning out of a common phrase. And uh, this was not as simple as an, or, or as effective as the Charitz film. And then there were also films of the American uh, experimental filmmaker Peter Rose in the 80s, very brilliant films that use text almost as subtitles in, in the subtitle um, 
convention that is very often the film starts with the text on the bottom of the image, but the image is black, so that there's nothing else than the words. And then little by little, in some of the films I remember at least, because he made many of them, uh, the words invade the screen and start to have other relationship than just continuous uh, phrase, a sentence relationship, and start to create constellations and chaos of, of syllables and letters. So these were basically the only things I had seen that uh, looked a little like what I was looking for or, or was trying to do. But then the, 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 the characteristics of such a, uh, a project were very simply derived from the definition that I gave, that is, a rhythm that would be generated only by the appearance and disappearance of words on the screen, that is uh, using direct film. You don't need to shoot any real life. No? You, can, you can print the, the, the text directly on the film. Um, and no addition would be necessary, either illustrative images or, or musical or even with a voice. And the first attempt that I did with that, uh, I will show you, it was called Elvin Jones. I, I, I did that on classical Avid um, system of, of uh, editing, that is before the, the computerized versions of uh, you know, edit, editing softwares. So it was a very rudimentary, simple system where you could create, generate sen sentences directly on the image. And I only used three lines of sentences that uh, uh, appear and disappear at different rhythms so that the rhythms are never synchronized. It's never the double, triple, or quadruple of one another so that ideally you could continue on and on and the list of sentences will alternate in an ever-changing order. Uh, that was the idea. And, uh, hello. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> I thought I was on the right track with this film because the simplicity was there and, and the rhythm effect that I was looking for was there too. I only added a soundtrack that I uh, commissioned from a musician I knew who did it after the film itself and according to the film and not the other way around, although it may sound when you see it, you'll see as if the film is following the music. In fact, nothing is following nothing. It's really random synchronization. Um, so all the films I made after that one, I made maybe 10 or 15 of these films uh, in the early uh, 2000s, well, early decade, last decade, uh, work more or less on the same, on the same principles. Uh, I chose the letters, the colors, the frames of the, of the, the words only to ensure readability. And readability, of course, it's challenged uh, with the speed of the appearance and disappearance of the words. But I didn't look for prettiness or elegance or beauty really in the colors or shapes of the letters. I really went to the simplest, uh, more efficient uh, types, uh, type fonts I could find. And um, so that means that to me, uh, a, a, a ciné poem, strictly speaking, is closer to animation and a verbal score, you could say, than with film or cinema per se. And um, I barely touched the camera using, uh, doing these films ever. I, only once maybe uh, for one of these films I used the camera a little, but otherwise they were really animation, creation in the machine itself and directly on the film. And they all rely on editing techniques really, uh, rather than direction or filming. Um, after the publication of a first collection of these films, about 10 of them, um, I noticed that the word cinepoem did exist, and maybe I had seen it and wanted to forget it, but it's a subtitle of one of the earliest films by Man Ray, uh, called Retour à la raison. And in this sense, um, in, in Man Ray's usage, it's not really, it doesn't really mean the same as what I meant by that, because uh, he's more referring of films made from a poem or as accompanying a poem or containing a poem. Uh, but they're visual, visual creations, um, uh, photographic creations um, mostly, like Retour à la raison and all these first, first films, the famous first films by Man Ray that you may have seen. And the use of the word cinépoème is, is more vague or metaphorical in that sense. 
uh, than what I meant. Uh, and in general, that's how I'd like to conclude this, to, to, to see how narrow my perspective is, but I hope a, a bit precise on this form. For me, everything that uh, only uses poetry, illustrates poetry, <laughs> includes a poem, or is inspired by a poem uh, in a film, or has the poet's voice, or the poet's uh, authorship uh, behind itself, um, are not poems. They're films, certainly, but they're not poems. To me, a poem is uh, mostly, if not only, made of words. And um, therefore, they're not, in my understanding of the term, ciné poem. And also, uh, my problem with these kind of films, inspired by poetry or, or illustrating poetry, is that very often this kind of vague and loose relationship of illustration, the same that you can find some illustrated books with a poet writing a poem and then a visual artist doing something else that is supposed to have some vague analogy with the text. And the danger for that for me is um, that attempting poetry outside of language and outside of writing very often leads to a kind of loose sentimental and lyrical or even pathetic um, uh, poetism um, that is to me, even when it looks experimental in the form, that is with you know jump cuts and strange blurred images or superimpositions, etc. Uh, to me, it's, it's more uh, on the verge of kitsch, really, than uh, what I expect of a poem as a strict and simple and precise linguistic form. So I will give you three examples of, of this type of work that I tried to do. First, the, the first one uh, called Elvin Jones. I will read the translation that you have, I think, in your handouts uh, of the text and then uh, show you the film. <clears throat> so there are three voices, although there is no voice per se, but three lines of speech. The first voice goes, you smash cobbles, you break statues, you deal new cards, you launch the bases to the top, you shake branches, you lift skirts, you crack pods, you slice logs, you scratch debris, you plow ice, you dig canals, you feather birds, you blow dust, you divide atoms, you make tombstones waltz, you unbury, you reanimate. The second voice goes, I make you come down, I undress you, I unlock you, I analyze you, I profane you, I dismantle you, I banalize you, I make you bend, I put you in a black box, I forge a fullerene cage for you, I multiply you, I digitalize you, I free access you. And the third voice comes and says, but you hack instruments, you add oil to water, you overdrive gears, you change calendars, you make the night come, you're a step ahead, you destroy allies, you preventively strike, you lubricate the rope, you divert, you err, you erase your traces, you disinform, you violate your rules, you burn your vessels, you dilapidate, you discredit yourself, you kill yourself, you reconstitute yourself.
so then, so not long after that, I tried in the same principle to do things that a, a little bit more um, layered or not complicated, but a bit richer maybe. And uh, the next film I, I, I will show is, well, you will see, uh, it's quite obvious, I think, but it works a little like an, a clock with um, different parts of a sentence that change at different rhythms, like on different wheels, and the clock is, is in a way, evoking uh, the works of memory that is of oblivion, basically, and it's called uh, Do Not Forget It. So the text, the translation, the English translation of the text goes a little like this. One day still, perhaps today, certainly a moment ago, no doubt within last year, one night recently, believe me once in your life, one Monday in June, at least in your childhood, from time to time, instantly at each hour every day, in the darkness through the window, on the ceiling, eyes closed in the street, on the phone in translation, on TV at the office, in the papers in bed, in a movie at the hospital, in a book at the sea, on the floor, in a face, in altitude in the toilet in dreams. You've seen, you've felt, you've perceived, you've noticed, you've met, you've made out, you've been embraced, you've reached, you've admired, you've loved, you've thanked, you've guessed, you've suspected, you've discovered, you've betrayed, you've rejected, you've refused, you've ignored, you've sacrificed, you've missed unknowingly, unwillingly, in passing by reflex, with no merit by chance, through negligence unaware, unexpectedly in a moment of weakness, perversely in hiding indirectly, as a challenge for nothing, shamelessly for love as a joke, for pleasure for the gesture, a thing, a detail, an object, a partner, an animal, a plant, a material, a creature, a monster, an ordeal, an idea, an image, a ghost, a signal, a memory, an emotion, a thought, a sentence, an urge, a beauty. Quick, slick, supple, simple, dense, shy, tiny, sublime, strange, incredible, fantastic, useful, difficult, complex, dark, implacable, solid, unique, necessary, which of woke you, excited you, convinced you, converted you, which surprised you, delighted you, which troubled you, worried you, shook you, which overwhelmed you, mystified you, misguided you, which dazed you, saved you, cured you, reconciled you, soothed you, which helped you, supported you, animated you. Deeply, perfectly, terribly, intensely, absolutely, softly, again madly, for once almost too much, as never to the end, with no limits, magically, irresistibly forever, excessively, totally. Do not forget it. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, the last last one I like to show is a little more recent, and you'll see that there a bit of an image or two, but they're really fixed image and not much really. Uh, even in that one, there was a vague photograph in the background, and it's a series of uh, four, five, I think, uh, small uh, films called Rossignol Manuel, which you could translate, I, I guess, as a uh, hmm, mechanical nightingale, in a way, or a, a do-it-yourself nightingale. And this is number four. So the text is very short. It's just a, a kind of an announcement of the film. And it says, the nightingale number four can be made with, one, a recording of fast, high-pitched noises, such as drumming, crescendo whispers, giggling, as the metallic one of a stick beating on a long tense wire. Two, a clear translation, subtitles. Three, the image of any bird, frail body, large throat. Now, here is the film, and we'll, we'll end this craft talk with that. Thank you. Oh, no, it's not that one. That's the one you have? Okay, that's another one. Oh, can you start it over and then I tell what it's about? This is another one. Sorry. It's in the same series. This is one of the 19 girls, but not the one I just read. Um, this is a silent film, and it's really only a poem with superimpositions of the parts of the poem that exist actually on a, on a book. But here I try to. Uh, hmm to make the, the word appear with a certain remnants of what was before, so that what is not simultaneous on the page can be simultaneous on the screen, as if, you know, a, a kind of passive memory of the words still uh, remained. It makes it a little difficult to read sometimes, but uh, that's the way it, it is. I, I don't have a translation for that, unfortunately. Thank <laughs> you.